What's going on, people? How y'all doing? Um, for those who don't know, I'm at my studio. That's why I see <laughs> the pictures on the wall. Um, this is new for me. Usually, when I do my videos are live, so this is going to be interesting. Um, recording this and posting it, but um, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, hope everyone's doing well. Hope your week thus far has been a blessed. And if not, we just thank God you're still here and pray that next week will be better than this week. And pray God's favor and pray God's covering and pray God's blessing upon you. Um, so we're not gonna be before you long. Um, for some reason, I feel like if you pre record videos and then post them, people are less likely to tune in as much as they would if you were live. I don't know if that's just me or not, but nonetheless, that's what I feel. And um, I just got here in the heat and the air is not kicked in yet. <laughs> so I'm a little sweaty. So I'm wiping my face throughout, nonetheless. Um, I wanna pray before I get started. Father, we thank you right now, Lord. We, we thank you for all you are, all you've done, all you've been for all of us, God. Thank you for keeping us, God. We thank you for holding us up, God, in the midst of our difficulties, in the midst of our struggles, God. You've shown yourself, shown yourself to be real, true, infinite, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. You've shown yourself to be all these things, God. You've shown yourself to be my provider, my protector, my keeper, my cover. And God, I'm thanking you right now for that. We pray right now for each and every person under the sound of my voice who hears me through this recording right now. I pray a divine covering over their family and their loved ones. I pray divine favor over all those things concerning them, God, for those who have business plans, God, for those who even on their job, God, I pray right now for a divine covering and divine favor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, so listen, um, I had all, to all intents and purposes an idea of what I was gonna speak on, but um, as time went by, you kind of got to be sensitive to how God moves. You can't say, I'm going to be stuck in doing the things I want to do and uh, not realize when God is trying to move you into something different. And so I um, had planned on speaking for one topic, and I'll say that for a different time. Um, because God kind of laid it on my heart to speak on something different. Um, I've told people uh, that I feel like the ministry that God has given me is one for encouragement and uplift. Now, I feel like you know, when preachers will say that when we preach a message, um, that we are the first partakers of the message that we preach, which is accurate. Um, and I know um, how God has made me and shaped me through the years it has always been um, a reflection of the needs that I even had. If you understand what I'm saying, um, there were times where I was down and I continuously needed encouragement and God. Um, would place people around me to give me words and encourage me. So I felt like that was um, <clears throat> the direction God was taking my ministry in um, because I would, you know, also uh, be blessed enough to be able to encourage other people and lift other people. And so when I would get the chance to speak uh, and to, to speak life or speak words of encouragement into somebody, I don't take that lightly. And so I want to talk today about... Um, something that got in my heart to encourage some people. Um, this is gonna be really informal. I wanna do a really informal talk. Um, sometimes we go through different struggles in life. Um, and while we are in the midst of our struggles, we don't understand why we're going through the struggles that we're going through. We don't understand the purpose. Not only do we not understand the purpose, sometimes we would even question the purpose. Um, in addition to questioning the purpose, we sometimes if we're real, we'll question the per person behind the purpose, which would be God. And then we can start to wonder, what is the purpose of this? The pain that I'm enduring, the, the difficulties that I'm struggling with, the problems that I'm encountering and facing. Um, if those who have you know, tuned in, even haven't tuned into my previous Bible studies, you've been friends with me for a while, you know the different struggles that I've had um, with loss and whatnot. And I mentioned a few weeks ago um, that I was thankful that in spite of uh, the loss that I had, um, I never questioned God. I might have said it was a lot that I was dealing with, um, you know, wondering if I could, you know, just see past this to the next step where God was taking me, but, you know, never questioned God who he is. Um, there is 
a certain revelation of God that you get after you're going through something. And some of us get that revelation while we're in the middle of something. Um, there's a certain revelation that you get where because God took you through a situation and showed himself to be who he is, um, you're able to say that I know God in a whole new way. When the Bible says in Corinthians, um, Paul says that I was given a thorn in my flesh, right? He says it's a messenger of Satan to buffet me um, because of the abundance of revelations that I've been receiving. In other words, Paul was blessed and gifted by God to receive revelations, and, and he had a really strong, powerful ministry that we know about because he's uh, one of the most popular apostles in the Bible. And he says the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Um, and then he begins to talk about the struggles that he had. Um, he said, I was given a thorn in the flesh. And in that scripture, you'll see where he says, my strength, God says to him, my strength is made perfect in weakness. For, uh, for when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Um, I realize what that means. That means when I'm physically weak of myself, that's when God's strength is the most evident. Because I know that had it not been for God's strength, I wouldn't have made it to the point that I'm even at. I wouldn't have been able to survive. I wouldn't have been able to thrive. I wouldn't be able, have been able to make it through the struggles that I had. So it's the strength that comes from submitting to God's will, no matter how much we don't understand it. It's the strength that comes from that, amen, that lets us begin to understand the true revelation of who God is, amen. Because there's a grace that you get when you hand your problems over to God and lift your hands up and say, I can't take no more. There is a certain grace, amen, that God gives you when you can finally say, I trust God enough. I got enough faith in God enough to say that I, of my own strength, of my own ability, I can't do this. Um, because as nat as people, naturally our first, res first response is going to be, what can I do to fix it? And there's nothing wrong with trying to fix it. But sometimes you get to a point where God's saying, listen, lift your hands up, step back, let me do it. Amen. Um, no matter how difficult the situation seems, no matter how unrealistic it seems that there is going to be a solution to this, we lift up our hands and say, God, okay, listen. God says, step back. Let me do it. When God fed the multitude with the fish and loaves, um, he told the disciples, step back, sit back, and let me take over from here. Now imagine the disciples thinking, okay, we got thousands of people here, thousands of people there. Came to see us, right? <laughs> Came to see us. We don't know what we're going to do. We got the fish and the loaves right here that the little boy had. Jesus said, all right, step back, let me do it. And so we would not have realized God as a provider had we not seen a situation where only God could provide. <laughs> Uh, there's a song that Tamla Man has sung, and I've been really, it's been blessing my soul this last week. And he says, God provides. Every, everything you need, he multiplies. You know, we wouldn't have known God in that way had a situation not arised where only God could do it. Amen. So there's a revelation even not only just of God and, and, and of how he can move. There's a revelation of you that you get only on the other side of the struggle. As the old saints would say, on, on the other side of through. There's a revelation that you would get. Amen. And so, I want to talk really quickly about the blessing and the struggle. Um, I want to use this scripture. I preached about this a while ago. Um, and it, it blessed my soul when I really, um, when God gave this message to me. Um, there's a scripture in Genesis um, that talks about two sisters named Rachel and Leah, their father Laban, um, told Jacob, we know who Jacob is, um, told Jacob, listen, you want my daughter Rachel, because he, Jacob saw Rachel, and he was like, yo, she is fine, she, she is gorgeous, she's everything I need, the boy saw Rachel, and he said, he started crying, <laughs> he saw her, started weeping, and um, he said, listen, I saw she ever, at that point when it's in the script and the Bible tells us that she had brought um, her father's sheep um, and Jacob was so enthralled with her that he said man I'm about to go feed her sheep <laughs> you know I mean? so Rachel was so fly she made the man go to work <laughs> and so Rachel was gorgeous right Rachel had a sister named Leah Leah uh, 
not so much. Leah, not so much because um, the name Leah actually means um, wild cow. Wild cow. Yeah. So the name Leah means wild cow. So think about this. The name that was attached to her by somebody she cared for was what exemplified her as a person in the scripture. So be careful who you let speak over you and don't hold on to those labels in the past that continue to hinder you. But we all got a past and some of us have had difficult childhoods and difficult situations from birth that we were raised in our, in, in our homes and even past that. Some of us had difficult last few years. Um, and if we're not careful, we'll allow ourselves to get attached to our issues because of the struggles that we have. Um, so her father named her Leah. She was unattractive. So um, Laban made a pact with Jacob, says, all right, this is what we're gonna do. You work with me for seven years, I'll give you Rachel. Jacob was like, all right, bet. She's fly, she's worth it. One of the most gorgeous women I've ever seen. Bam, let's do it. Seven years pass. Okay, cool. Laban switched it up. Um, Laban actually sent Leah in there, and Jacob laid with Leah. Um, now, the interesting thing about that is this. He eventually laid with Rachel. Um, the difference between Rachel and Leah, aside from their looks, is as gorgeous as Rachel was, she was barren. And as unattractive as Leah was, she was fruitful. And so what God's trying to tell us that even today is that sometimes in order to produce something, it takes something ugly for you to go through to produce something. Uh, so, so as unattractive as Leah was, she was the one who was able to give Jacob what he wanted, which was an heir, which was children. Rachel, as pretty as she was, she produced no fruit. Because going through life and not dealing with struggles and having things easy and having things quote unquote pretty doesn't always produce character, doesn't always produce strength, doesn't always produce resilience, patience, all these fruit of the spirit that the Bible talks about. Sometimes going through easy things the easy way doesn't produce the things that God needs from you for you to be going to the next level that he's taking you to. So instead of cursing the difficulties that we have in our lives, instead of cursing the connections that we have that are ugly, we've got to step back and say, okay, what am I going to get from this situation? What am I going to get from this struggle that I have? When I preached a sermon years ago, the title was, I think, I'm connected to something ugly. <laughs> Amen, because... We sometimes see things with our natural eyes and don't see how God is moving in our lives. And because we don't see how God is moving, we start to start questioning who God is. Um, and the funny thing is this. The Bible says because she was hated, because, you know, uh, Jacob didn't want her. Um, she was despised by other people because of her looks. The Bible says because she was hated, God caused her womb to open and bring forth children because she was hated. Because of the things she went through, because of the struggles that he had, that she had, because of the difficulties in her life, that's why God's, God caused her to be fruitful. Because of the problems you had, when you didn't understand what was going to happen next, because of the issues where you cried out and nobody was there, because of all those things, God says, I'm going to cause you to produce something. And you don't understand at the point in time what it is that God's bringing out of you. And that could be something as simple as a new, um, a new understanding about God, a new level of revelation, a new level of anointing, um, overcoming a struggle that you continuously fought against. Because some of us, if we'll be honest, and I say us because I mean us, if we'll be honest, there are struggles that we continuously go through because we can't find the strength or ability to overcome. But we turn over to God and say, God, let you do it. Then the revelation can simply be that 
God has given us the strength and the ability to overcome that. So that one issue that affected us before doesn't affect us anymore. And you know what I'm talking about because some of us have had problems with relationships that we can't seem to get over and we keep going back to. Um, we got problems where we give too much of ourselves and don't know how to say no. <laughs> don't know how to say no and find ourselves stressed out. Uh, we got problems where we always make ourselves available for other people and those same people don't make themselves available for us. We got all these different issues that we keep going back to because it's normal for us. Because sometimes if we're not careful, our dysfunction become, can become common. Beware of the point that you are continuously making excuses for things that are wrong because you have com made common your dysfunction. And so because Leah, with all the struggles she had, God says, okay, I'm going to bring a blessing to you. I'm going to make you bring forth fruit. For all those other people that didn't struggle like you struggled, I'm not going to allow them to bring forth the fruit that they, that, that, that they think they need or that they want. I'm going to bring my favor on you and cause you to bring forth fruit. Amen. And so sometimes you got to understand that. Sometimes you got to understand also um, that it takes a difficult situation to produce. It takes a difficult situation for us to see things the way we need to see things. It takes a difficult situation for us to be able to... I'm not, somebody's calling me. It takes a difficult situation for us to see things. Sometimes, if we look at the situation with a blind man, think about this. You're blind since birth. You continuously struggle with something. And in order for you to get delivered, you got to have spit and dirt put on your face. And when he had spit, then Jesus uh, mixed spit and dirt. He didn't see right away. He still saw blurry. Because even though God did the work, sometimes we had to trust God even when things aren't clear. He saw a blurry still, and then he had to wash his eyes, and then he began to see. We don't always see things clearly in the midst of a situation. We got to trust God to say, okay, eventually things will become clear with that blurry now. So the time we start to question whether this is really God that I'm dealing with and why God's put me in this situation, those are times we got to have faith and say, it might be blurry now. I might be seeing through all the difficulty it might be blurry because I'm seeing through the dirt. I'm seeing through the issues. I'm seeing through the problems. That's what's in, in the middle between uh, my deliverance, my miracle, and my current state. It's all these dirt and all these issues that I have right here that's affecting my vision. So I can see a little bit. I can see where I'm going to go. I can see what's going to happen next. But it's blurry because I'm still seeing through the dirt. That takes a level of trust. Amen. And so, there was a person in the Bible named Benjamin. Um, Benjamin, when he was born, his mother died giving birth to him. And she named him Benani, which means son of my sorrow. Um, so as he was being born, his mother died, and she named him that. Um, Benjamin's father turned around and said, no. I'm going to name you Benjamin, which is son of my right hand. Now, if you don't know, biblically, right hand means power. So he says, you are the son of my power and my ability. Because if we're not careful, we will make a mistake, make a permanent mistake in a temporary situation. Because all Benjamin's mother thought about was the struggle she was having when he was being born. And she attached that label to him because of that current situation realizing that that current situation wasn't his permanent destination and so we've got to step back and say no matter how difficult this current situation is I know that God has greater things for me I know that has, there's things in me that even though I can't understand it God has preordained for me and so what God did, I'm sorry, what Benjamin's father did was took his pain and turned it into power. And so what God is saying even right now is that for some of you, I'm taking your pain. I'm taking that struggle, that difficulty, that emptiness feeling that you have, uh, that loneliness feeling that you have, that loss feeling that you have. I'm taking all that and I'm using that to give you power. And with that power, I'm giving you power to speak of those things. I'm giving you the power to overcome those things. I'm even giving you the power 
to be able to bless somebody else that is going through the same thing you went through so that they overcome those things. So the more we struggle with things, the difficult, the more difficult it can be. But the more we trust God, the more things will begin to come, begin to come clear. And even if you're like Leah and can't find your revelation until you go through something ugly, then that's what it's got to be. Even if you're like the blind man who sometimes knows that the deliverance is coming, but it's hard to see because of all the dirt of your past and your issues that's in front of you, you still got to keep trusting God. And even if you're like Benjamin, who people have attached to you a label, a name based on a temporary place that you were at one point in time in your life, you still got to trust God to take your pain and your problems and turn it into power and turn it into praise. So we trust God. We're thankful for God for what he's going to do, for even what he's doing right now in our lives. And I'm just looking forward to just hear from some of you guys. Listen, I did put up a post yesterday and say a prayer request. Listen, every week I'm trying to make sure I'm consistent with posting, posting something. Um, if you have a prayer request, please submit it to me. Uh, I would like to pray for you. Like I said, either I'll, I'll pray for you right there when you send it to me, if God leads me, um, or uh, I will pray for you here if you want. I won't say any names. I'll just pray for the situation. Amen, because I believe in the power of prayer. Listen, before I go, I also want to thank you guys for donating to the outreach event I did last week. It was awesome. It was. It went great. We were we uh, exceeded the amount that we were looking for, and I just pray. I praise God for those who helped out, either by donating something or just coming up to showing up to volunteer. We're doing it again, uh, April tenth. That's a Sunday. Uh, be on the lookout for more information about that. Um, tell your friends. We've got more volunteers. We want more food to give out because there's never too much food to give out. Uh, because what I did was I went to Camden, um, and my, my studio is in Philly. Um, I live near Kensington. If you never heard of Kensington, look it up. Um, and so because I went to Camden and I still have a few uh, a few bags of food left, I came over to Kensington and gave the rest of it out. So there's no shortage of people in need. Um, the harvest, like the Bible says, is plenteous. Amen. But the laborers are few. So just make sure um, if you can continue to pray for us. And if you have any spare money here and there, listen, every amount helps to donate. We definitely appreciate it. All right. Listen, thank you guys. Uh, be blessed. Stay strong. Understand that as difficult as it might be, that God is still able. Amen. God bless.